So let's bring it back to Australia then. There was recently a study published by doctors at the Children's Hospital at Westmead in Sydney that cast some doubt on puberty blockers. Is that right? What, what's happening there? Yes. Well, these are the, the most senior uh, clinicians and researchers in the area of gender dysphoria, this bodily distress that young people have. Um, and they are based at Westmead Children's Hospital. Uh, they also operate out of University of Sydney. Um, recently, they published the third uh, paper in a series. And their studies are looking holistically at the kids who turn up at Westmead with their minds already made up, made up that they're trans. They already have decided that they want puberty blockers. Often their families are thoroughly convinced that this is, you know, this is what has to be done and should be done straight away. And the clinicians and researchers became worried because they started to realise that these families and the kids had a whole host of other problems, psychiatric trauma, abuse, loss of parents, all sorts of red flags telling you that you really want to carefully explore what's going on here and not put these kids on a, you know, a medical conveyor belt. Yeah, um, I mean, those... well, I mean, the first, the first stop on that conveyor belt is the puberty blockers. Now, you've found that, well, as researchers, it's now quite conclusive among researchers that the puberty blockers do cause permanent, have permanent effects. What are they? Well, I guess it, it depends how you express it, but um, the least contentious stuff is that the puberty blockers, um, they interfere with the normal rapid increase in bone density in adolescence. And the fear is that down the track, these kids may be extremely high risk for osteoporosis. Um, there are potential psychological effects, uh, including low mood depression, puberty blockers. Um, there may be some effects uh, to do with diabetes-like symptoms or, you know, preliminary or early problems of that kind, metabolic syndrome. Um, but there are just many unknowns about puberty blockers. I mean... But the one thing that the, the, their proponents claim consistently is that putting trans kids on this, as you call it, a conveyor belt, reduces their likelihood of suicide. Is that true? There's no direct evidence for that. Um, there's low quality, you know, online anonymous survey research suggesting that kids who identify as trans have a, an elevated risk of suicide attempts. But as I say, that's low quality data. Um, the clinicians I've spoke to think that these kids diagnosed with gender dysphoria, they probably have a, they, they do have an elevated suicide risk compared to the general population, but it's probably similar suicide risk to kids their age with depression or anxiety who get referred to a mental health clinic. And because these kids with gender dysphoria typically often also have depression, anxiety, autism, all of which can increase your suicide risk. There's no, it, it's simply not clear that gender dysphoria in and of itself is the key suicide risk. Uh, there's no evidence, no good evidence also that if you put these kids on the medical path, that the suicide risk associated with gender dysphoria will fade away. 